Today we'll be looking at innovative uses of technology using Padlet to aid a research unit. The problem that I was trying to solve with this tool is that my students need to learn how to generate, organize, and analyze a large amount of information in our AP literature research paper. Um, this unit winds up being like their culminating project for their senior year, and it's part of their responsibilities for our GATE or Townsend and Gifted program. And it, whatever I use needs to help them create not only their research paper, but also a portfolio documenting the process. Um, and just being real, my students are all seniors and senioritis is real right now. Um, their frontal lobes are like grape jelly and they can't keep things that are attached to them together. So it's really hard for them at this point of the year to sort of like muster up the wherewithal to get this done without some sort of support. And the idea is that they're supposed to do it without support. So, and you know, we're figuring it out. So over the years, I have tried many tools um, none of which have perfectly fit, most of which have been overkill, but now I think I really have found an elegant solution to this problem. Um, before I had technology, uh, I had tons of index cards, and depending on how old you are, you may remember this from your high school days. Um, I would buy a metric ton of index cards and little metal rings for them to use, and inevitably, most all or the most important of their cards would get lost and it would just always wind up being a huge pain in the tail and it also generated a ton of excuses for which I have very little patience on a good day definitely not by the time April and May rolls around I'm done with that sort of thing so I I need something that is less painful for me personally and also more practical for my kids um, so the, t <laughs> the index cards were right out as soon as our tech director rolled in my very large, very much loved, out-of-date laptop cart. Um, I immediately burned every index card within a five-mile radius, and then I immediately downloaded all the apps. Um, we use a lot of applications. Um, one of the things that I sought to do with this program is sort of learn how to better wield that sort of power because it is terrible and beautiful at the same time. And I think that it's very important to sort of like not drown your students in options. So some of the things that we've used in the past, um, Evernote, Google Keep, Trello, um, all for organizing and taking notes. I've used various ones at different times and um, let my kids explore and make some choices, which is good, but that really only works for the top third of the class. Everyone else is sort of like, just tell me what to do. And it is hard to sort of make them use a tool. Um, we use Google folders to organize the different sections of this paper. This paper winds up being about 20 pages, um, sometimes more, sometimes less. And for my kids to sort of like wrap their mind around how to get that much content on a paper, they really need to scaffold it and break it up. Otherwise, it just seems too unwieldy and they shut down. So um, we spend a lot of time making a lot of different files in order for them to feel like it's not a huge undertaking. And that can become a mess as we all probably have Google folders. Um, very quickly, they can descend into madness. If you're not using something like Doctopus, which really doesn't work for the kids in the same way it works for us. So at any rate, I digress. It was a mess. And before long, uh, it just got out of hand and I need an austerity program, which is what this word is, austerity. Sorry, that's supposed to be austerity. Nice job, AP Lit teacher. So what I ultimately need from a tool for this project, I sat down and sort of brainstormed out the things that I needed to do. Um, I needed to be flexible, reliable, and have a low learning curve, and I think those are pretty much things that we need from all of our tools all the time, so they're worth putting down just to keep in mind. But um, one of the problems I have is sometimes I pick tools that are way overpowered. Like Trello is not necessarily the best tool for this. Um, neither is Evernote, although I feel like maybe in the beginning it was. Now they keep adding features and it's gotten crazy. At any rate, um, it needs to work with other tools the students select to use. For instance, 
a lot of my kids are really comfortable with Google Docs and their Google document folders are a mess, but they still want to use Google Docs to ultimately write and type up whatever it is that they're beginning to do. They just need somewhere else with which to organize the information, which is where the tool comes in, but we'll get there in a minute. Um, and the other thing is it needs to be accessible from their phones. Um, my students primarily access the internet from their phones. Mo most of them, the vast majority of them, do not have computers at home, and pretty much they rely on their phone to interact with the digital world. So it's important that whatever tools I choose are low resources in terms of like not being a lot of flash and that sort of stuff, and also run pretty smoothly um, on the phones and also on our laptops because they're not new. And, and like right now, I love the LMS that I'm using, but it takes forever to load. So it's it needs to be a little bit more practical. And the other thing is it needs to allow for me to be the omniscient overlord that silently lurks on student works in progress because here's the problem. These are seniors. They need this done to graduate with honors. And of course, if they slack off and tell me they're doing it and I take them at their face value, we can have a lot of very unpleasant meetings before that graduation about why Jamal isn't graduating with honors. So in order to prevent that, I silently lurk like a creep. It works. So my inspiration for this, using this tool, came during the webliography phase of this project. I found Padlet. Um, I re the first time I saw Padlet was like at a, I think at a, it was at ISTE a couple years ago when it was Wall Wisher. I thought it was cute and gimmicky. I didn't. Um, my upper level sort of classroom, but I have to tell you, I saw, watched a couple videos and I read a particular um, blog post, which is connected to this R point later, which I'll show you. And I have to tell you, it was pretty amazing. So um, I'm trying to get over my trust issues with application and learn to love again. I think that I can do it with Padlet. Um, so the thing that really cinched me on this was the low access hurdle because at this point it's not if I add a new tool it can't be complicated there's no time for them to learn something new and there's I really don't want to have to teach them something new because I really want to spend the time on the content not getting bogged down in technology one of the things I really liked about Padlet is that I can literally give them a web address and they can start typing um, which was great it's great for not only my students but it's been working pretty well for the staff as well and I'll get into that a little bit later as well. So the first link I want to go to, and probably the only of these links that I'll go to, but I'll post everything on my page, but I want to go to this one. Miss uh, Treichler, I believe, her Padlet resource page is amazing. Um, this is sort of telling, just telling you the basic ideas of what it is, but the thing that gets cool is she really has some good embeds about like this basic tutorial like you can print this off for your staff or your students and then she kind of puts together some ideas on how to use it um this is straight off their the padlet website but she comes down here and has a bunch of other ideas for possibilities that are pretty pretty vast i think and i think pretty universal they could be used in a lot of different contents um and I believe this is actually a pad. Yeah, this is a Padlet. So she kind of shows you by making one. Um, she has a bunch of e examples and a bunch of different resources that you could also use. So this was my go-to resource that I used to sort of like get get myself started. Um, obviously, additionally, I used boop, 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 boop. Um, you know uh, a just a Google search of the videos and I watched about three of them to get myself started and um, another cute little I think this is a Google Doc that just has a bunch of lists of things that you could do with a Padlet that I thought was pretty good to sort of help me get started to use and customize this um, so what I did is I kind of restructured my unit again because you know what what are you doing on the weekend restructuring units don't lie to yourself you are um, I use Padlet I scaffolded it from its use of just posting on a Padlet that I made, like, hey, what do you think of the character change in Hamlet from scene one to scene two or whatever? That's a little tight. That's not a great question, but you get my point. Um, to them actually, like, making their own. Um, 
using it to to journal, to post journals about Hamlet, using it to um, take reading notes, but also all the way up to the point of doing an annotated bibliography of their own and also a paper outline for their massive research paper. Um, one of the reasons why I liked this for the journal taking and the note taking instead of a wiki, I felt like the wikis were a little hard to use from the phone. We haven't found one that has been super easy to use across platforms and I feel like Padlet has been a little bit easier. Um, sure, it's lacking some things, like it's not as customizable as maybe some people would like. You can't exactly make it do what you want, but for the most part, it's pretty flexible, so it was pretty effective. Um, so the idea here is that each step builds on the text skills and writing process skills learned in the previous step, so I'm not spending a ton of time building, like just lecturing on how to use the technology or modeling how to use the technology. It's pretty self-explanatory, so each new thing is kind of just just a baby step ahead of where they were. Um, each step is easy to monitor and help troubleshoot because I have all their, you know, one of their responsibilities is to immediately send me a link to their Padlet. And once I have that, it's super easy for me to help them when they get stuck and text me at night or if they run in between classes, it's much easier to load than our LMS or a wiki. I can just bust it out on my phone in the hallway, literally. So that's pretty nice. Um, and also, it makes a pretty decent looking and manageable portfolio without the kids actually having to sit down and make a portfolio, which is a super plus. So the first lesson plan that I'm using for our creating project is um, one where my kids are taking it and using it to make notes. I think I kind of referenced that in my unit overview. But so this lesson takes place early in the unit. I'm going to say like maybe week two. And it requires students to have already set up an account, um, which they did at the end of week one with an activity called the anticipatory, sorry, anticipati anticipation playbill, um, which they posted to their own Padlet. So basically what they did was they made a Padlet account, which is not that big of a deal. It's easier than making a Facebook. And they just used Canva, which is something that we've regularly used, to make um, a playbill for Hamlet, kind of documenting his basic character traits and ideas about how Shakespeare is forming him as a character. Um, so this is what they've done now this week in week two, is they're going to start actually doing their journaling and note-taking here. And actually, honestly, as soon as I showed them, most of them, not most, I would say four or five of my 20 immediately moved all their notes to Padlet. So the rest of them kind of migrated over. Um, most of the students are reading digital versions of their, their book. If you're wondering why I'm not just having them annotate a la carte in their book with like sticky notes or writing, um, I just don't have books like that. So most of the texts that we read are digital text and therefore kids need to learn how to take digital notes. Um, and it's maybe not perfect, but I think it's a good skill to have for college because sometimes there are times where it's just cheaper and more practical to have a digital copy of your textbook or whatever you're reading. And if you can be flexible and, and teach yourself to learn like that, it's going to be good for you. Um, so students have turned in digital notes using Word, Google Docs, and et cetera in the past. This is just easier because it's honestly just easier to use on your phone. Um, which most of them are. And, you know, sometimes the kids will have even, you know, I have them come in sometimes with their own iPads, and it's just an easier tool for that sort of thing. Um, the second lesson plan that I made for the creating is um, the actual outline for their research paper. So they actually have to create an outline using different entries. Um, using all the notes they took, the journals that they entered, and their um, bib annotated bibliography, which was also done on another Padlet. So basically they just need to take all that and put it in one spot. And it's pretty elegant um, so far. It's been working much better than other things have, and I'm pretty excited. So the reflection on this is that I honestly believe this has saved me a lot of time and heartache. And my principal was so excited about it that she has already had me give some PD on it. And while I think that there are still places for things like Evernote and Trello 
it just it makes more sense to use this.